Today on TNN, we continue our Destined to Grow series in the Law of Awareness. But today we start with Find Your Purpose and Your Passion. So get something to take notes with. Grab a first cup, cup of coffee. Let's go. Welcome to True North Nation. This was brought to you by Solid Rock Church in Irving, Texas, where we bring you true direction in a lost world. Now let's hear it from our host, Pastor Ed Snyder. Okay, folks, thanks again for coming back on this Friday morning as we launch into the weekend. Hopefully, I'm going to give you some good stuff to have a better weekend. So as we've been talking this week about the law of awareness, and as we have uh, discovered things that we need to do for our personal growth, today we're launching in what we left off with Wednesday, and that is find your passion and your purpose. So in, in starting, in talking about this, you, you must know yourself and accept who you are before you start building. That's, again, a critical building block. You've got to know yourself and accept who you are before you start building. Because if you don't, if you don't come to realize who you really are, you know, what you're made of, your personality, your ups, downs, your likes, your dislikes, and all of that stuff. How can you start building if you don't know the foundation? Now, if you're running from God and God's purpose in your life, you're running from your God-given passion. And if your passion doesn't include God's plans for your life, then it's time to go back to the drawing board. That's your starting point. And there are plenty of folks out there that I know of that run from their calling. They they get scared. They don't know if they can do it. They don't know if they have enough talent. God's going to take care of all that. You just need to embrace, at this moment, you need to embrace what God has laid out for you. Once you're aware and once you have accepted the path of your life, you can start working through the process. But that's first and foremost is perhaps you've got to get yourself back in an altar and pray and seek God. Maybe do some fasting and soul searching and stop running from your calling or your passion. After you, after you insist on finding his will and commit to seeking God with all of your heart, I promise you one thing, he will immediately put everything in motion to reveal himself to you. This is the first step in making commitment. I promise you, God will step up and immediately put things together. Now, uh, the scripture t- uh, speaks to this, that for which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. You know, that, that scripture, for I know in whom I believe and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Second Timothy chapter one, verse 12 in the new King James version reads like this. For this reason, I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I'm not ashamed for I know in whom I believe and am persuaded. I am convinced I am locked in that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him or to him unto that day. <clears throat> so uh, again, in your notes, I want you to write this question down because this is a thinker question. Do you like what you're doing now? You know, some sometimes we do things temporarily, uh, perhaps out of necessity, and but we should be constantly in search of something that fits our passion and our purpose. If you're not worrying, or excuse me, if you're not enjoying what you're doing, it's time to examine why. Why do you not like what you're doing? You know, we all know we get stuck in that job we hate, uh, but we've got it. We need the paycheck. And we all know that's a miserable place to be. You've got to get 
out of the, I hate going to work or I hate doing this, but I've got to do it because it's a necessity to the point where you can take care of the necessity and do something that you love. And God will take care of that for you. Does does the path bring a risk? You know, again, to get to where you have passion, to get where you love what you're doing, does that move? Does that does that um, life change? Does it bring risk? Of course it does. Absolutely. Everything you do, folks, here's something that that we fail to realize. Everything you do involves risk. You go in and ask somebody if if they are hiring and and you'd like to submit your resume. That's a risk. You get in the car and drive somewhere. That's a risk. If you're married, when you ask your your wife or your sp- whichever it is, your your husband, your wife, you, you know, to be wife, to be husband, it, when you ask them out on the date for the first time, you took a risk. When you said, will you marry me? You took a risk. Everything we do involves risk. Understand that. So what's the big deal about making a a change in our path of the way we're living now to the way that God wants us to live? Or perhaps we have uh, something in our life. We don't like how we're the job that we're holding or the career path that we're on. And so we need to make a change. One thing we got to be is happy. And the only way we're going to be happy is that we Christ center everything that we do in our lives. Everything we do, our family, our our jobs, our careers, uh, our hobbies need to be Christ centered. Our relationships need to be Christ centered. So risk is there. You might fail. You might decide you don't like this as much as you thought you did. Uh, you may have to take a pay cut. And it, but if you stay with the passionless career or path that you're on, you also take risk. You might get fired because you don't have the energy to do it. Uh, Worst of all, you may come to an end of your life feeling that dreaded sense of regret of wasting your life on something that left you feeling unfulfilled. Now, again, being who I am, a pastor, a preacher of the gospel, Christ needs to fill that void. You need to get your life in line with God and the passion and the ability to pursue the passion will come to the surface. Another question, if you're taking notes here, what would you like to do? Okay. The first question is, do you like who, what you are doing? And then the next question is, what would you like to do? If God's word the center of where you are headed. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 20, my son, give attention to my words, keep them in the midst of your heart. So folks, we need to get our Bibles and get it in our heart. David said, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. So the word of God is going to keep us, we're on the straight and narrow if we'll let it. But it also helps us gain and grow. Once you put everything into a spiritual perspective, then proceed to pursue the passion God designed you to embrace, I promise you, it's going to be a whole lot better. Now, you know, a lot of times people will see the titles that I put on these episodes about personal growth, and and they automatically think, oh, he's talking about leadership. I am. And personal growth, oh, he's he's talking about, you know, uh, gimmicks and gizmos and gadgets and, and, and all of this self-help stuff and all that stuff. Yeah, I am. But it's all centered around God. Because you see, if you don't find your passion within God, what's what's what good is it? You've got to have a God-inspired passion. Because a God-inspired passion is limitless. Why? Because he's limitless. Every successful person has a strong sense of his or her unique abilities and aspirations. They're they're leaders in their own lives, and they dare to pursue their dreams, of course, in their own terms. 
That's them. I'm talking about us. I'm talking about you. You that's listening to this podcast right now. God's got to be in the middle. When you tap into your passion, you experience the E and E factor. The E and E factor. Number one, energy. You suddenly are alive and awake. I know that's the way it is with me. You know, there's some things that I do that are mundane. I hate doing them. Uh, it, it is connected, perhaps, to something that I love doing. You know, it's it's all of that. But energy. When I click into doing a podcast, when I click in in teaching somebody control the beast, when I go to the pulpit to teach Bible study in midweek, when I hit the pulpit on Sunday to preach the gospel, I am energized. No matter, I could feel like I've been hit by a truck, but by the time I'm done with the podcast or the lesson or the sermon or whatever, I don't have a headache anymore. I I don't, I have energy. The other E of the E and E factor is excellence. You don't want to just do it. You want to do it right. One person with passion is greater than 99 who only have interest. So be that one person. Be that person with passion, with God-given passion, what God wants you to do. Equally, one person pursuing their passion with God on their side is greater than 9,999 without God. So God is the fuel to our passion. God is the fuel to our energy, our excellence. He is everything. Third question, how do you tap into your passion? How do I do that? You know, Pastor Snyder, I, I hear what you're saying every time I, I come to the to TNN. I hear what you're saying, but how? How do I tap in to my passion? Well, number one, pay attention to what you love, you love or what you love doing. Okay? Number two, when you're on fire for God, what are you drawn to? You know, when you're when you're on top of your game, when God is all over you, I mean, you're prayed through, church term, but when you're prayed through and you're on fire for God, what are you drawn to? That might be a passion. Okay? What drives you to wake up in the morning? What bounces you out of that bed in the morning? That could be your passion. All right? Here's another one. What do you find yourself talking about? That's another indicator. What do you talk about all the time? Of course, I hope that that a good portion of your conversations, you're talking about Jesus. You're talking about his saving grace. You're talking about how that you once was, but no longer. And now that you are, uh, you're filled with the Holy Ghost, baptized, and hopefully your conversation is filled with a lot of that, okay? But outside of your conversation about God and salvation and grace and mercy and what he has done, i.e. your testimony, your story, what do you find yourself talking about? What's the interest? You, you cannot hide what you love. It will come out of your mouth every time. Spend just a, a, a few free-flowing moments with a person. And it won't be long until you hear their heart. Can't help but but emerge. It, it just comes out. Small talk can be a real, real eye opener. Okay. Now, here's another question. In fact, matter, I'm going to pause right now because I see what time it is. We're going to go to a break and we're going to come back with, can you do what you would like to do. That question right there. We'll be right back. Hey folks, Ed Snyder here. Um, As you know, we are really growing as a podcast. TNN is now going out three times a week 
And uh, we've got the Ed Snyder Project launched, and we're we're developing a lot of good content uh, that we're going to be publishing. We are publishing not only to Control the Beast book, but it's going into audio version. Uh, the online course is about ready to come out onto the market, and uh, we've got book number two. And then also, if you haven't heard, I had a conversation with my publisher, and he wants me to start writing the sequel to control the beast. And he suggested a title of release the beast, which is getting you into beast mode to become successful in whatever you do for God. So a lot of good things are coming. So I want to ask my loyal listeners out there, if you wouldn't mind uh, sponsoring us, getting a subscription for only $15 a month, If we have enough people, then we can make some things happen with TNN and the content that we're publishing. If you'll go down into the show notes, if you're on our website, just drop down into the show notes and you'll see a link that says support the show. Uh, if same thing, if you're on Spotify or Apple or Google or what platform you're listening to this podcast, just click the link of support the show in our show notes. And we would love and be honored if you would just $15 a month support TNN and all that we're trying to accomplish. Again, thank you in advance for your support. Thank you for being a loyal listener of TNN. And thank you in advance for subscribing to our ministry. God bless. Back to the episode. Okay, we're back from our break, and uh, we're diving into the question now. Can you do what you would like to do? I've got a story that that I read, and I, I put it in my notes for today, and I'm going to tell you a story about a, about a man named Bobby. Bobby was an unhappy person, and it became more apparent every day. He was a worship leader in a church, but was obviously unhappy. So his pastor called him aside, and and uh, Bobby admitted his his unhappiness. When asked what Bobby would rather do, I mean, if you're unhappy as a worship leader, his pastor said, "What would you rather do?" And Bobby replied, "I'd like to be the announcer for the New York Giants." <laughs> in in the pastor's mind, he thought Bobby was destined to be unhappy for a very, very long time. Number one, he didn't possess the skills. Number two, the job wasn't available. Number three, it was time for Bobby to become realistic. Okay. That's a cute little story that I thought fit very well with what we're examining today in finding your passion and your purpose. And can you do what you would like to do? There's a huge difference between having a dream that propels you to achieve and pulling an idea out of the thin air that has no connection with who you are or what you can do. So to explore this more fully, uh, we we need to we need to look for a book, and I go out there on Amazon. As you know, I've said it before in other podcasts. John Maxwell is my favorite author. Um, lots and lots of his books that I possess, but he's got a book. Put your dream to the test, and and from that book, here are three questions to ask yourself to identify if what you want to do is possible. Okay. Number one, do you know the difference between what you want and what you're good at? Okay. The two things don't always match up. And to be successful, you need to be doing what you're good at. Okay. The next question here is, do you know what drives you and gives you satisfaction? Take a look at that. And, and, and again, if you're, if you're note-taking, uh, write this down. Do you know what drives you and gives you satisfaction? Some people get in their get it in their heads that to do something for the wrong reason. You know, they they may think the job looks easy. Sometimes the job is harder than it looks. They may think the job looks glamorous. Some of the most glamorous jobs are the loneliest jobs. 
They may, they may just want the rewards that come with the job, the perks, the big salary, the recognition. But what motivates you lines up with what satisfies you. It's a very powerful combination. It's not about the perks. It's not about the big salary. It's not about how the how it looks glamorous. You know, it's it's a glamorous job or it looks easy. It really, ladies and gentlemen, the purpose in your life, the 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 fulfillment that you're looking for. You know, again, not de- negating the fact that you we've got to have God in our lives and fill with His Spirit. But folks, I know Holy Ghost filled people that are unhappy people and don't feel fulfilled because they're not in the passion that God designed for them. So again, what motivates you lines up with what satisfies you. And when you get to that point, you have a very powerful combination. So I know I'm asking a lot of questions, but I my purpose in this episode is I need to get you to think. I need you to get to to uh, for you to take a spiritual inventory of yourself. I need you to really drive down deep into your heart, mind, and soul and find out where you're at so that you can get on the back right track so that God can bless you and motivate you to where you need to be. So Again, do you know what your values and priorities are? What are your, what are your organization slash church slash ministries values? What are those priorities? And and to know you, uh, the more you know, this is, this, that this is the one that really grabs a hold. The more you know this, the greater your chances of being successful. Cross purposes will impede successes. You got to find a focus. Get your focus. What has God called you to do? Now, again, just to clarify, when I say, what has God called you to do? I'm not just referring to a pulpit ministry. Not everybody's called to a pulpit ministry. My pastor, Guy Rome, when I was a teenager, when I was 13, and I went to him and said, Brother Rome, I feel like God has called me to preach. And we were standing in the sanctuary after church, and he said, Son, I want to tell you something. I'm proud of you that you feel God's called you to preach the gospel. And he pointed at the pulpit. He said, that pulpit, being behind that pulpit, is only 10% of your ministry. The other 90% is going to be getting your hands dirty. And of course, you know, when you're 13, you don't ask questions of of your pastor say, "Can you can you clarify that for me?" I really didn't understand at the moment what he meant by getting your hands dirty. But what he was talking about was the work of the ministry. Being behind the pulpit it, with, with the light on you, uh, for the 30 or 45 minutes of your preaching, that's only 10%. The other 90% is the prayer and the counseling and the study and the, and the, you know, the raising of the money for the church to go and, and, and ministering to people, teaching Bible studies, going to hospitals, all of that stuff. But I also know a lot of people that their careers are their calling. What God has put them as a career, a way to provide for their family, is actually their calling to help people and contribute to life here on earth. So you can't, folks, let me, again, you can't win if you don't begin. Plain and simple, not rocket science. You cannot win if you don't begin. The people who get ahead in the world are the ones who look for the cir- look for the circumstances they want, and then they they can gr- they can't grab them, but they go for them. They make it. Okay. They it, it, fi- in fact, some people, the ones that really win, if it's not there, they create it. They make it happen. So now let's keep this in a spiritual perspective. Consider your purpose is not just about you. It's about what God wants to do through you, okay? Next is, he has called you to a purpose and wants you to walk in it for others and for your own joy. 
Next, the also the, to consider that since God has called you, he is completely able to reveal the path you must take to fulfill your purpose. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33 in the King James Version, the Bible says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Just continue to keep your spirit in tune with God, your eyes open, and your heart pliable in God's hands, and pursue your life's goal. That's it. Seek the kingdom of God first, and his righteousness, everything else will fall in place. Okay? Next is you got to take the initiative. You have got to take the initiative. Do something specifically that brings you closer to your goal every day. That's why I'm big on goals. Write them out. And, and not just write them out, write them out every day, or at least review them every day, and then purpose in your mind you, that day you're going to do something to help achieve or get you a step or two closer to your goal. Almost all successes are the fruit of the initiative. You can't just sit around and wait. So how do we win? How do we make this happen? Number one, move into action. Number two, be accountable. Make your goals as public as you can. Now, when I say as you can, you don't want to tell everybody your goals because not everybody, unfortunately, is in your corner. Some people want to see you fail, unfortunately. So that close person, that most trusted person might be the one you share your goals with. Share them with people who are supportive. Manage your attractions. Who are are uh, who you are is who you attract. If they if the crowd you're with is not taking you towards your goal, then you need to reevaluate and make some changes. Find the people a, a, ahead of you who are able to show you the way forward. Those are the ones, as I said in a previous podcast, if you're head of, if you are ahead of the whole class, you're in the wrong class because you've mastered everything in that class. Now it's time to change classes. So meet those who you can read the books of those who can help you succeed. Find a good, powerful, anointed, spiritual mentor and possess a teachable spirit. The unteachable will stop growing and slip backwards. Don't be that person, okay? Be prepared for your for your meetings together. When you meet your, your mentor, get ready. Ask some questions. Write some questions down. Get all you can out of that mentor because that's the person that's going to teach you. Hopefully, uh, in a good portion of what, who I'm talking to out there, it's your pastor. That really needs to be if you've got a good pastor, that needs to be your, your mentor. Ask the question. Set the agenda. Determine what you have learned from your time together. And then, of course, be accountable for what you've learned. Okay? I think it was last week, and uh, we're again, we're almost out of time, but I want to try to get to the finish line here on this subject. I, I mentioned the fact that sometimes people are not willing to pay the price to do what you have to do. What do you want to do? Author and educator James Thumb said this, probably the most honest self-made man who ever was, uh, was heard saying, I got to the top the hard way, fighting my own laziness and ignorance every step of the way. You'll have to work hard. You'll have to make sacrifices, and you're going to have to get your flesh under subjection to the will and to the Spirit of God. And when it comes to barriers to succeed, we are usually our own worst enemy. Amen to that. So when you can can begin to start doing what you like to do, you're headed in the right direction. 
So we have to realize it'll be different than you imagined. There'll be some surprises, but it's going to be okay. You're going to make it. You're going to be okay if you just keep going after God. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next week on Monday morning. Don't forget, if you would, uh, help us by subscribing to $15 a month. Check the show notes, support the show, help us to further the gospel. And we got, we love you very, very much. God bless. To find out more about finding that true destination, visit us at truenorthdfw.org.